Hey guys, I'm uh, back with uh, step two. Um, bear with me here, I'm not used to talking and working at the same time, so sometimes I'm trying to explain and think of what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And it doesn't always come out right, but uh, we'll work through this together. All right, now that that's on, I'm gonna take the material and lay it over it. What's nice about this, it gives you some time to maneuver it. A little bit different than uh, working with monocoat or you know where you just iron the material down but as you can see I can I have wrinkles in it and everything else and I can just pull those out while the glue is still setting. Basically work my way around see it as as the material or the glue uh, penetrates the material it changes color if I don't have enough it's a little bit light here you'll see um, I can always add a little bit more of the poly brush to the outside and it will uh, penetrate through and adhere to the wood you can see there I've got it pretty well trimmed and I can already tell that it's starting to tack in other words, the, the material is, is being supported by the, the glue already, and it's uh, starting to kick off on me. It's like a, well, maybe like rubber cement, a thin rubber cement. Don't worry about any wrinkles that you may have in it. Um, those will iron out quite a bit. This thing, uh, heat really stretches it takes a lot of the wrinkles out. All right, you can see here I've, I've worked it out. No special tools or anything like that. It's just basically stuck on and for the most part the wrinkles are out. I see a little bit more right here. Just take it and pull from both directions. Just keep working it until I'm happy with the, the tightness. Alright, so at this point it's relatively stuck on. Now you can hear again, let's see if I can do this, there's no there's no drum effect, it's just a, a loose cloth whereas the part that's been had one coat of sealer on it is already tightened and um, fairly stiff. Now, this doesn't add a whole lot of weight. In fact, I weighed this material beforehand, and uh, it, the whole elevator weighs uh, 40 grams. So we're going to see how much more this adds to it. I don't think it's going to add a whole lot to it. Let me take a little break here, and I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, we've given it a little bit of a chance to uh, set up. The glue is uh, fairly dry, and uh, now what I'm going to do is I have my various tools, a good pair of uh, trim shears and a pair of pinking shears. Uh, trim off whatever I'm going to be working with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pinking shears and just start cutting an edge. And I basically use the thickness of this blade, you can see how they're how this thing is made here. Uh, kind of give you an idea. Um, you now there's all various types, but this one seems to work really well. I can put the the edge up against it and make my cuts. So if I'm very careful as I go around, I end up with about a quarter inch overlap. Alright, we're in pretty good shape. We've got it pinked around the edge. Now I'm going to do is apply some more of the, the poly brush uh, tack cement and go around the edge and then I'm just with my fingers just 
run it back down and actually glue the, the overlap. Okay, now that I've got most of it uh, all tacked down, the edges are sealed up pretty good, take my heating iron and uh, you, you want to keep a fairly close track on the heating iron. Uh, you get it too hot and it, uh, this material is actually capable of crushing some structures if it's uh, over uh, you know, 350 to 400 degrees. So um, I like doing my initial settings at about 250. I use either uh, well, I've got, you know, the old Coverite uh, uh, scale that you can put on there and it'll, it'll turn the, uh, you know, the arm to you know, whatever temperature it is. And for the most part, it's it's pretty accurate. Uh, sometimes a little too slow for me to do it, so I use my heat gun. And uh, you'll see here it's set right at about 250 or so, depending on where you, you show it on here. But uh, it regulates around 250 or so. Um, that's a good temperature for um, the initial shrinking. All right, so what I'm going to do is, again, you can hear... There's very little uh, drum effect, if you will. It's just a fairly soft cloth. But once I touch the iron to it, it's going to uh, tighten it up considerably. So again, make a pass. Hopefully this will show correctly, but um, again, it just tightened it right up. Make a nice pass over it. It's already making it... Uh, drum tight. That's all it takes. Now the thing is completely wrinkle free. Go back around any of the edges that might need to be done uh, just to make sure this will reactivate the, uh, the glue with the heat and uh, any places that need to be tacked back down provided there's glue underneath it, it'll stick it right back down. Again, fairly simple process. I know it's a little bit more than the, the vinyl coverings, but uh, well worth it for the final effect. So there you go, guys. Um, I've put that on. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same poly brush material, or the, the liquid, and I'm going to give it a quick coat over the, the fabric. And basically, you wipe it right back off. So just enough to get a penetration it starts to seal the the uh, material and uh, once it gets a seal you'll hear the difference again this is this is a stretch that has a nice little tone to it but once it gets a sealer on it it's even tighter all right what we're going to do in this shot is attach the rib stitching that i made earlier to in this case the stab uh, we're going to place it right directly over a rib and uh, glue it down with the, the uh, poly brush adhesive. Uh, very easy to do. What I'm going to do is take my brush. Bear with me if I don't get this thing in the picture all the time, but uh, hard to tell what I'm doing sometimes. Uh, I'm just going to put a, a light layer of this brush don't have to be real neat because this is going to get uh, several coats of the sealer and then the polytone, the, the actual paint. And it'll get brushed on and then uh, final applications will be the, um, actually get sprayed on. Okay, I've just put a coat on. You can see how much darker it is. Um, it's just a, a red tint to kind of let you know where you've been. If they made it perfectly clear you have a hard time telling where you are with it. Let that tack up a little bit. Make sure I've got the right side that I would need for the, uh, the stitching. I've got a fairly good piece here that's uh, the stitching is straight. On, uh, on the actual stitching that never actually goes all the way to the leading edge tubing, it, obviously starts back a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off just right at the first stitch. 
because it doesn't need to be there. Uh, stitching goes over the, the rib itself. There'll be a little cap strip that goes over it. Get this in place. I'm going to work it back and forth just to make sure that it's straight. Push it down. You can see this glue is already drying and you can see it start to penetrate through the cloth that had the stitching on it. Again, I'm going to trim off this last one right here. This is not needed. Again, put it down. And I'm just going to I'm going to hold it up to the light. In this case, you can't tell, but uh, I'm going to hold it up to the light just to make sure that I've got it centered well over the rib itself. It's pretty well tacked down. I'm going to give it a quick coat right over the top of it. And that will penetrate through the cloth again. I'm going to do this several times. Um, go ahead and put another one on here. And it's all said and done. It's actually quicker than than even putting on uh, act, doing the actual stitching. When I'm through, I'll probably have a, a good thousand stitches in place and for the most part you want to try and line up the stitches so that they're across from each other that way um, you know if I really wanted to get crazy about it I could actually mark where the stitches would have gone but the basic pattern is going to be the same again trim off this last one here tight. I kind of move it back and forth just a little bit. Make sure that it's all the way down. Check for alignment. Make sure it's over the rib itself. And then I'll just add a, a light brush of the adhesive again. It goes right over the top. This piece will be bonded permanently to the to the cloth. It gives it a nice effect. Let's see if I can show it here. Can't really see too well in this light, but uh, you can see how the stitches are showing up. Uh, once it's all been sealed and it's got several coats over it, it uh, it almost disappears. But it's enough to know that. You know, the pieces uh, authentically stitched as it would have been on the real aircraft. This keeps it, uh, uh, the reason for that is, uh, you know, like on convertible tops. If they, you, know, you see a convertible top going down the road at 60, 70 miles an hour, it'll balloon up. Uh, same thing would happen with this material if it uh, wasn't actually stitched down to the ribs. So they want to maintain that airfoil shape. And... Uh, since the glue is good enough on, on this to hold it down, and we don't have to worry that much about uh, uh, changing the airfoil shapes, we do the simulate stitching just to give it the same effect. Well, I hope you like that, guys. Uh, I'll try to keep adding to this as we go, but uh, there you go. I've only got, uh, I don't know, what, 100 more of these to do? <laughs> I'll talk to you a little bit later.